Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to <clears throat> excuse me to the April 23rd City Council meeting. First thing we'll do is stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Christy, can I have a roll call, please? Here. Downing. Here. Gagne. Here. Morissette. Here. Here. Page. Here. Watson. Here. Okay, next we have approval of the minutes from the April 9th City Council meeting. I move approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next we have approval of the bills with Mr. Morissette. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I make a motion we approve the bills in the amount of $647,846.63 subject to the Comptroller. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next move on to public comments. If there's anybody in the audience has anything they'd like to say, now would be the time. No? Otherwise, I just have one, one quick statement I'd like to say. Um, just take a minute to clarify a few things here. Um, I want to address an article that was appeared in the front page of the Sunday's Pioneer Press. Uh, part of the article focused on the Kinney and the future dam removal. I want our council members, residents, community partners, and visitors to know that there are some concerning issues with the article. There are some statements contrary to those included in final reports prepared for the Kinney Corridor project by consultants and their project partners. In addition, the article misstates the council's resolution passed in January. If you read the article and were puzzled or upset, as some of us are, by the assertions, quotes, and misinformation, and I invite you to visit our project website at kinneycorridor.org for more reliable information. I am disappointed to have learned that much of the Kinney-related information for the article was supplied almost exclusively by one of our city council members. The reporter has shared with staff that he was under the impression that the city council member was acting as a spokesperson for the city. This, of course, was not the case, or nor, nor should it ever be the case. Council members are always free to speak their mind, but should be mindful that they do not and should not speak for the city unless directed by the mayor or the city council. I want you all to know that I plan to respond to the Pioneer Press with our concerns. To those of you who have been part of the planning process over the past two years, and for those of you continuing on as part of the Kinney Corner Collaborative, I want to thank you for your respectful cooperation. I am proud of how the community came to consensus around the issue of dam removal. I am proud of the plan we worked so hard to create. This is the accurate depiction of the project and the plan moving forward. So thank you for the time. Okay, next, we're moving Mr. Mayor, on. I have uh, one public comment. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to take time just to thank our city staff who went around and unclogged all the storm drains that are around the city. We had subsized, uh, uh, quite a bit of water, and also to thank the citizens who went out and actually uh, unclogged them, too. They, we have some unsung heroes in our community, and we want to make sure we thank them as a council. So thanks, Mayor. Yep, thanks, Sean. Okay, next, we have a couple presentations. First, we'll have a municipal court presentation by our judge, Daniel Graham. Or I'm sorry, Gorman. <laughs> sorry, Dan. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I know I've had a chance to talk with many of you over the course of the last year, but not all of you. So I thought I'd take a moment to introduce myself, introduce the court, and then talk about the current procedures in front of the court, as that would be a good framework to lay out any changes that have been made since I've taken office. My name is Daniel Gorman, and I am the municipal judge of the River Falls Municipal Court. I attended law school at William Mitchell College of Law, graduating in 2011. At that time, I took the Wisconsin Bar and passed and am currently a licensed attorney. However, I don't currently practice law, working mostly instead in real estate and title. Um, I was elected in, as municipal judge in uh, the spring election of 2018, and at that time, the sitting judge was uh, the Honorable Judge Cicero, who had served on the bench for over 30 years. Um, in that time, her knowledge and skill has uh, forged the municipal court system here in River Falls to be one that uh, is used as an example for other municipal courts across the state of Wisconsin. And as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, those are large shoes to follow. <laughs> but I'm glad to say that the first year that I've been judge, 
uh, that transition has gone smoothly and there's a reason for that and that's because I've had a lot of help. Um, the city staff has been an excellent help. Um, I have a judge's mentor who is Sue Garrity, who is the municipal judge of Hudson. And uh, of course the uh, court clerks have been excellent. And I do have to pause here for just a moment because as I mentioned, I work a lot in real estate and I have the opportunity to travel to a variety of municipalities across the state of Wisconsin. And the caliber of clerks we have here in River Falls is truly phenomenal. Um, their dedication and hard work is an inspiration to me every time I put on the robe and the ability to uh, work with people who are in different mindsets in a complex problem, you know, solving environment is really a credit to our city. So I just wanted to say that uh, before we go any further. When it comes to the operation of the court, things that largely continue as they always have, there have been some minor changes that have been made. So we'll go through that. Um, generally, there are two types of tickets. There are mandatory court appearance tickets and non-mandatory court appearance tickets. Um, and certain infractions fall into either of those two categories. One of the changes I've made is including retail theft tickets in the mandatory appearance categories as I think it's important that people who go through the intentional crime of stealing something have an opportunity to address that in front of the court itself. And also because oftentimes in retail theft cases, uh, there are restitution claims. And I believe restitution is best dealt directly and in person rather than through the mail after someone were to just plead guilty and pay the fine. Um, which brings us, of course, to the initial appearances. Um, first and foremost, initial appearances are now held in the evening rather than during the day. I think that's a general service to the community because uh, most people can't afford to take time off work in order to address their claims in court and having evening court for the most part removes that obstacle from use of our judicial system. Um, at those initial appearances, that is the primarily the first and last experience that someone will have with regard to a ticket. Over 90% of the people who attend the initial appearance plead guilty at the initial appearance. Um, and uh, the few remaining people will go to uh, pretrial conference with the city attorney and the vast majority of them will plead their case there. Um, we have switched over to the SDC for collections process, preferring that method over both arrest and license suspension as it's been shown to be more effective in the collection of unpaid tickets and also is generally less onerous on the individuals. Um, that is the line share of what I have. If uh, anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Yep. Um, has there been any other major procedural changes that have occurred um, since you've taken the role as municipal judge uh, that are notable compared to what it how it used to be ran? No, I think the largest one, well, actually, there are two. The largest one, of course, is changing it uh, to an evening court rather than a day court, as that has required some changing of staff uh, requirements because, of course, they have to be here in the evening. Um, the other one, we did add a second juvenile court date for initial appearances because the uh, Wisconsin statute says that those have to be dealt with in 30 days. So if you only have one in a month, that means that depending on when the ticket is written, uh, they might have to show up to court the very next night uh, in order to comply with the 30-day limit. So by having two, it allows you know, parents to take time off work if necessary, to retain an attorney if that's what they so choose, and uh, also meet that 30-day requirement. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it sounds great that uh, the efficiencies are coming together um, more uh, for the use of your time and our citizens' time and maybe some of the folks that come to our community and unfortunately get a citation for their actions. Um, I think that's a, a fantastic use of uh, the judicial system to, to make sure that it's efficient and, and allowing people to not impact their employment as well for some stupid mistake they might have made. Um, also, a question for you, um, what role are you using your uh, judicial um, seat for drug courts and uh, restorative justice? We. There was an existing restorative justice program. Most of our restorative justice is handled through the St. Croix Valley Restorative Services Center. They recently changed their name. Um, and they offer a host of classes on everything from tobacco use to, uh, I guess, marijuana, um, as those are the two primary substance cases other than alcohol that come in front of the municipal court. Um, harder substances, of course, like 
heroin or cocaine or meth um, don't get processed in the municipal court. So we don't have as much when it comes to drug courts uh, with those specific issues. So do you normally see that you're using those on more first-time offenders or even like second, third? We do make a specific effort to assign those on first-time offenders. Sometimes if there's been a long gap and we've noticed that they've had the opportunity before to go, um, we will order it again. Um, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Yep. And to an extent, as you mentioned, some people come in from far-flung places. So their ability to go to a restorative justice course in River Falls on a given weekend uh, would be a pretty substantial burden on them. So we don't always use it, but when justice so requires. Now, I've actually, the reason I asked this uh, restorative justice question is I personally had uh, uh, a girl break into my house some years ago, and we went through the um, municipal court and restorative justice, and I really like that impact of, like you said, bringing somebody before the court, but in this case, bringing that person before their uh, uh, victim and then the community members that actually get to kind of talk about how that impacts all the different levels and how it could have impacted you even further. So oh, and absolutely. I, I like to see that the court's still using those programs. Mm. And that I think is the primary purpose of the courts in general okay. is, you know, I mean, many of the cases that come before us are relatively minor compared to the cases that might show up to the circuit court. And uh, the municipal court largely serves as a reminder to people of the standards of conduct that, you know, we've set out. So the ability to address that in person, in a formal manner, I think has, in fact, a lot of restorative and beneficial uh, results on those people as well, so. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else have anything for him? I'd, I'd just like to say thank you very much. And I, the court is, the, the municipal court in particular in River Falls, but just in general, is, um, is really a crucial social um, institution and just so important for uh, the young people and other people in, in this town to help, um, uh, to help all of, all of those who kind of find themselves uh, veering off the right course of path, get themselves back on. And, and it, it, I just, I, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Yep. I guess I have one follow-up question. Um, how many cases come before you and what kind of, uh, that's like the, I guess my topic is vaping. Um, what kind of cases are coming before the um, River Falls Municipal Court and kind of how, how big of an impact is that having on our community and speci specifically our youth? Sure. Um, it does appear from the bench that the majority of people who come into court on tobacco related offenses are coming in on vaping offenses. Um, so I can say there has been a cultural shift from smoking to vaping. Um, I don't know specifically historical trends, um, but we normally get, I would say, one per initial appearance, sometimes two in that sort of range. So I wouldn't say that it's so far been a chronic issue um, in the sense that it's something that we're seeing in great abundance you know, every time we have an initial appearance. But it's certainly uh, something to be aware of in our community in general. Awesome, thanks. Okay. okay, thanks, Judge Gorman. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next presentation. Um, we got a bunch of students here from uh, uh, UWRF, uh, Professor Neil Krause's political science class. <clears throat> uh, they're going to give us two presentations. One is actually, Brant, you could probably explain this all better than I can. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, members of the City Council. Uh, so tonight, before you, uh, we have two groups from Professor Neil Krause's political science class. Um, I can't remember, what's the political science class title? Politics of Major Cities. Politics of, see, we're a major city, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for the two topics tonight uh, that they'll be covering, um, so the first group that'll be going up tonight, uh, they'll be talking about the Kinney River Corridor um, and an implementation project for uh, managing conflict between uh, Fisher, per, anglers, sorry, at, <laughs> and uh, kayakers and then the second group uh, will be talking about uh, board recruitment strategy for our boards and commissions and uh, committees so uh, I want to introduce uh, I might get some of your last names wrong we didn't go over that beforehand but Ali Slaughter John Carpenter Tegan Turbo thank you and then I'm probably gonna mess this one up Cloris okay <laughs> So uh, please welcome them up here. All 
right, thank you for letting us be here tonight. So um, as Brent mentioned, thank you for the introduction. We're here with a um, poli-sci class at UWRF. We are all students there um, in a class under um, Professor Krauss. And so our project is under the Kinney River Corridor Plan. And so we are looking at ways to manage um, paddling and fishing conflicts on the Kinney Kinnick River. So to start with some background, um, with the passage of the plan in January um, and the plans to remove the dams, as well as um, public support for increasing um, recreational uses, uses of the river, um, it is expected that in the decades to come, um, use of the river for recreational purposes will increase. And so therefore, therefore we are looking at ways to mitigate any conflicts that might become um, between people who use the river, whether that be paddlers, so kayakers or canoers, and then also fishers. So we looked at other cities around the US and then also a few abroad um, for our research, looking at cities that may have had similar issues, whether it was plans to revitalize their um, the river in their town or um, if they had any conflicts in their city with recreational users. And then we also looked at um, the DNR and um, made contact with some recreational businesses in here in River Falls. Um, so we have a set of recommendations um, on ways to mitigate that conflict and then we also came up with some mock materials as sort of some um, thoughts and guidelines of what we were talking about. With the expected increase in recreational use following the removal of the dams, these are our recommendations as she said. Um, it would be beneficial to create new access points that have both on-site parking available and public restrooms, more specifically on the Lower Kinney, between the now Glen Park and County F access points. It should hopefully encourage um, river traffic to the river's entirety, thus reducing the amount of possible conflicts by reducing the amount of contact that these users have with each other. We also found it would be helpful to distribute some kind of educational brochure or material, not only here upstairs at uh, City Hall, but at the access points and at businesses providing a recreational service. Um, these brochures or educational resources should in some way both highlight proper river etiquette as well as have a simple and easy to understand map highlighting the, ac the public access points. Um, we have there uh, an example of our mock brochure that we set up. It does encompass the etiquette element, but it can be improved upon itself by making it a trifold maybe, or including that map that is easy to understand. Um, some of the river etiquette that we believe should be posted either on these brochures or on signs uh, include things like do not disturb fishermen and paddle quietly. Paddle 50 feet when possible away from fishermen. Pick up litter, carry out what you carried in. Keep your feet wet, which is pretty much a rule, so don't trespass on private property. Stay in the river when moving along private land. Uh, when it comes to life jackets, one person should uh, have a life jacket per person in the boat, and children under 13 are required to wear a life jacket. And then we also recommend uh, posting the number for the DNR in case there's any misconduct or violations being seen. Lastly, we would like to um, propose that more information would be added to the living and visiting tab on the River Falls website to help not only people from the city of River Falls, but people like tourists from other cities um, and highlight in that page uh, the proper etiquette for the use of the river. And also, again, um, link the maps and the parking points in access to restaurants areas. Thank you so much. Any, any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Just a quick question. Um, you mentioned or you referred to the um, projected increase in use of the river. Um, I think intuitively we all know that that's probably going to happen, but is there are there any sources that you can point to in your research or are those just intuitive and based on the plan? Or it, was, was it was mostly based on the plan and, and Brant also mentioned it a couple of times that it was expected to increase so we just took it as it was. Okay, very good, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Sure. Um, did you look at or think about um, like alternating days with different use types or any kind of um, uh, 
systems that might are there other other rivers where you know that type of approach has been taken I think that would be a little hard to regulate, especially with the river not being just in the city of River Falls. I think um, from what our research showed, a lot of the conflicts that are happening in other cities are when um, rivers are popular places for tubing, um, and I think that can be a little bit more disruptive. Our river is cold enough that it's not um, as common of a practice here, so I think um, the conflict happens a little bit less because of having those tubers. I think it would be hard to regulate, um, but that could definitely be something to look into. Thank you. Um, just to add to what she said, one of the things that we found, uh, especially in the uh, in Germany, was that they have fishing licenses. Uh, but as she mentioned, I don't know if that's going to be the case to um, include that practice here. So basically, what happens there is when um, people that are interested in fishing practices they go to the city hall and they get a license that specify where they can go fishing or how or how many and um, but as, as she mentioned uh, we, we're not sure if that's we, we have that much of a practice here to include such a thing okay anybody else have any questions no okay on to the next one thank you very much yep, thanks thank guys you. You that's a good job <coughs> then I want to introduce the second group here uh, Melanie Myers, Nathan Mudlung, and Elijah Anderson. They'll be talking to you about uh, the board recruitment strategy. Come on up. Thank you, Brandon. Um, so yeah, I'm Melanie, and this is Nathan and Elijah. We're here to talk about board recruitment. So not no longer managing paddling, fishing. <laughs> um, you know, with the diverse amount of boards you guys have. Um, I know Brandon really emphasized the point of recruiting or diversifying um, the recruitment that we have. So I hope you had the chance to look through our proposal um, or our suggestions for new opportunities to recruit members. Um, but one thing that I thought a lot about was recruiting students. Brandon mentioned that <laughs> recruiting students for the library board was of interest. And I think exposing students to the idea that they can go to the public library, not just our university library, is a um, great opportunity to get River Falls students more involved in the community. Um, and then I encourage you to seek out students who already have a library card, um, because they would probably be like the most interested in serving in the library. Um, and then you can recruit students by going to the university center, holding an informational table that would really um, offer the chance to not only talk about what board recruitment or what boards students could be on, but also um, more about how to engage River Falls, University of Wisconsin River Falls students with the River Falls community and um, hopefully increasing, you know, their understanding of what opportunities the city has for them. Um, so that's one thing I focused on. We talked about social media, maybe implementing a handbook um, for board members to look at. Kind of sounds like a lot, but it might help answer everybody's questions and make it clear to everyone what, um, what opportunities they have. So I think Nathan wants to speak more on social media. Um, but again, I recommend you look at our proposal to really understand the bulk of our ideas. Thank you for letting us speak. And as Melanie mentioned, um, my name is Nathan Madlung and I'll be um, commenting on the social media aspect. So as she said, um, recruiting younger people seem to be a big focus. So why not go where the majority of them are? Social media. Um, I looked at several studies, um, many of them from the Pew Research Center. And I found some really interesting things. Uh, from the age group 18 to 29, only 2% reported sometimes getting their news from newspapers. 38% of them said that they at least get some news from social media. And in informal polls that we conducted, it was actually closer to 70 to 80% of students our age get at least some of their news from sites like Facebook and Twitter. So this presents an opportunity, not only for recruitment of students and younger people in the community, but it's a really broad way to get information out, especially with low newspaper reading rates. 
Um, social media is free and the majority of people are on at least one platform and check it at least one time a day or a couple times a week. So like I said, it offers a unique opportunity to get the news out to the majority of the community. And as generations grow up um, and get older that have been using it for their entire lives, basically, um, having that strong foundation now will be helpful in the future. So thank you. Hello. Now, generally speaking, in bro the, bar the broadest terms that there are, our research concluded that th it doesn't matter which town you're in from, west from the East Coast to the West Coast, the board recruitment strategy needs to be tailored to the community that you know, you're trying to recruit from. And so regardless of which strategy from among the ones we chose or from elsewhere you guys decide, you need to pay a lot of attention to where the actual people are coming from, usually via just asking them. How, how did you hear about this position? What brought you here? And then from there, you can find out which things are actually working in the area you're in, be that social media, public press releases, bulletin boards, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that concludes our presentation. Do you yeah. guys have any questions for us? Anybody have any questions? Would you like to serve on a board? Yeah. <laughs> that, send, send me an email. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Right. You, you did guys. a great job. Appreciate it. Okay. So we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, first, we have acknowledgement of the following minutes. <clears throat> we had the EMS Advisory Board from uh, 314. We have the River Falls Housing Authority from 313. We have the Historic Preservation Commission from 313. We have the Planning Commission from 35. We have the bid board from 312. We have the Park and Recreation Advisory Board from 220 and 320. We have the Utility Advisory Board from 318. Uh, we have Powerful Choices from 314. And we have the West Central Wisconsin Biosolids from 228. And then the next one is a resolution designating the official city um, newspaper. Uh, so we're required each year to advertise for bids on the newspaper and uh, River, River Falls Journals obviously was the only bidder, so this uh, re resolution would award them the the um, official newspaper. Anyways, resolution approving bid for the 2019 sanitary lining project. Uh, this resolution would award the bid to the Visu Sewer Incorporated. Uh, next one is a resolution award bid for 2019 route and seal program. Uh, and this, this resolution would award the, uh, the bid for the 2019 uh, route and seal program. Does anybody want to pull anything? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull uh, consent agenda item number six, resolution approving bid for 2019 sanitary lining project. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for the rest. Mr. Mayor, I move for the approval of the consent agenda number four, A through I, number five, number seven. Second. Questions or comments from anybody? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next, uh, Mr. Downey, you pulled number six. Resolution approving bid for the 2019 Sanitary Lining Project. Um, I just have one quick question, and um, it talks about how the process reveals any pipe segments that might need repair. Um, on average, this is my question, on average, how many change orders uh, occur uh, on average during a cycle when we do this? I don't know exactly how many change orders per se, but I do know, for example, this year we have $174,000, $175,000 in the budget, and this is for 100000 So we did leave a little money in the budget in case we do discover more uh, clay or other types of lines that need work throughout the year. So last year I know we added a few on as well as the year went on. Um, but I don't know exactly what the dollar amount was for those change orders, but we do leave some money in the budget, Sean, for things we will, we will discover yet this year. So it's ample room in the budget for it. There is, yes. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve resolution approving bid for 2019 uh, sanitary lining project. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next move on to uh, the, the administrator's report. Um, if anybody's got any questions for Scott, or Scott, if you want 
couple of announcements. Um, the River Falls passenger trail update, er, pra passenger train update from the St. Croix Valley Rail Group is tomorrow, April 24th, 7 p.m. at the River Falls Public Library. Um, we do have a staff member that's planning to attend um, that can provide an update to the council, um, but certainly the council is welcome to, uh, to attend if they're interested in that information. Wings of Spring World Migratory Bird Day, um, sponsored by the St. Croix Valley Bird Club, is Saturday, May 4th, 8 to 1230 at City Hall. Um, there's more information on the city's website under the community calendar. Uh, May 13 to 18 is the spring cleanup for city residents. Spring cleanup runs Monday through Friday of that week, May 13th to 17th, and it's 4 to 8 p.m. in the evening each of the weekdays. Saturday is May 18th, 8, p uh, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, I, I don't have a real great idea for folks about when the busiest times I've, in my 10 years living here, I've tried to go different days, times, and combinations, and it seems to be um, busy all the time. So Well attended. It's well attended. So uh, some of you council members, I know it's your favorite event of the, My absolute of favorite the, of the year. Um, uh, this is a service that's paid for by you, uh, paid for by residents on their utility bills, and we certainly would encourage city residents to take advantage of the service that they've paid for um, and spruce up the uh, um, spruce up their yards and uh, garages, sheds, and other things. Uh, and certainly we'd ask again that neighbors are helpful to their, their neighbors. I know this is a good time of year to find a neighbor that has a pickup truck. Um, see if you can borrow it uh, or share loads. That also helps cut down on the lines at the, at the site. So if you've got three or four neighbors that are all planning to take two or three items, you might want to just... Uh, um, throw it all in one truck or trailer and head down. It keeps the lines moving a little bit faster. So um, there's more information on the city's website and under uh, if you look up spring cleanup for city residents. There also is a fall cleanup now that's offered, um, but why wait for fall when you can uh, get that get those items now? I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Mr. Mayor? Yep. I guess my question is for uh, Kevin. Do we have uh, um, any kind of stats as far as the electronics um, collection? The uh, yeah. residences? Yeah, I did talk to Mike Noreen on Monday morning about that. It was just under 300 people who participated in that. I don't have a tonnage. He said they had to call for an extra truck late in the day. So they filled up their one truck load and they had a backup truck, and it was just under 300 people participated in electronic recycling. Fantastic. Good. Okay, nothing else, then we'll move on to the Comptroller's report. <clears throat> uh, the Comptroller's report for March 2019. General fund revenues through the end of March were $3,471,120 and included $38,780 in recreation program revenues, as well as building permits of $67,716. Um, part of that was the River Falls School District construction. Expenditures for the same period were $2,236,451 or 21% of the annual budget for a net of revenues over expenditures of $1,234,670. Thanks, Dan. Okay, next, I got some announcements. We got uh, four different proclamations to read. So our, our lovely council members here will read those for you and we'll start with the, uh, the proclamation designating clerks week. That's me. Proclamation for municipal clerks week, May 5th through 11th, 2019. Whereas the office of the municipal clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world as the oldest profession among public servants and provides the professional connections between the citizens, the governing bodies, and agencies at the local, county, and state levels. And whereas the duties of the municipal clerks are many, including serving as the official record keeper for the municipality, issuing licenses and permits, facilitating the annual board of review and municipal redistricting project, attending meetings, and serving as a community resource. And whereas the 1,854 municipal clerks and 72 county clerks contribute to election administration by attending required training and dedicating themselves to providing fair, non-biased, non-partisan, accurate, and responsible elections in Wisconsin. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Dan Toland, do hereby recognize the week of May 5th through 11th, 2019 as Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our staff for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. 
given under my hand and seal of the City of River Falls this 23rd day of April, 2019. Thanks, Diane. <coughs> okay, next we'll move on to Police Week Proclamation. <coughs> Uh, Police Appreciation Week, May 12th through the 18th, 2019. Whereas the police officers of the River Falls work devotedly and unselfishly on behalf of this community, regardless of peril or hazard, safeguarding the lives and property of all. And by their service and dedicated efforts, these men and women have earned the gratitude of the city of River Falls. And whereas in 1962, President Kennedy was authorized by Congress to proclaim May 15th of each year as National Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all peace officers who have been killed or disabled in the line of duty. And whereas the President's presidential proclamation also designated that the calendar week in which the May 15 occurs or proceeds shall be proclaimed as Police Appreciation Week in recognition of the service given by the men and women who stand guard in our communities and proclaim May 15, 2019 as Peace Officers Memorial Day. Now, therefore, I, Dan Tolan, Mayor of the City of River Falls, do hereby proclaim the week of May 12th through 18th, 2019 as Police Appreciation Week in the City of River Falls and encourage all citizens to observe the week with law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to the responsibilities have rendered and dedicated service to their communities and proclaim May 15, 2019 as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who through their courageous deeds have made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty. Given under the hand and seal of the mayor of the city of River Falls this 23rd day of April 2019. Thanks. Okay, next we'll do the Arbor Day one. Proclamation, Armor Day 2019. Whereas trees are a vital resource that help to conserve soil and energy, filter our air and intercept stormwater runoff, create jobs, provide wildlife habitat, and make our countryside more livable and beautiful. And whereas human activities along with acts of nature threaten our trees, creating the need for concerted action to ensure the future of our rural and urban forests. And whereas each year on the last Friday in April, Arbor Day, people across the country pay special attention to the wonderful treasure our trees represent and dedicate themselves to the continued health of our forests. Now therefore be it resolved that Mr. Dan Toland, Mayor of the City of River Falls, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2019 to be Arbor Day in the City of River Falls, Wisconsin, and urge citizens to become more aware of the importance of trees and to participate in tree planting programs to ensure a healthy and green city and an inheritance for future generations. Given under Mayor Toland's hand and seal of the City of River Falls this 23rd day of April, 2019. Thanks. Okay, and last but not least, we've got the Rotary. All right, thank you, Mayor. A proclamation for the River Falls Rotary <coughs> Day on April 26, 2019. Whereas on, Mar whereas on March 20th, 1999, 32 charter members founded the River Falls Rotary Club with the motto, Enhancing Opportunity for Youth, Creating a Better World for All. And whereas the Rot River Falls Rotary Club helps fund many organizations and projects that benefit the community, including the Sunshine Fund, Turning Point, and several student scholarships and other scholarships. And whereas the River Falls Rotary Cl Club provides community service through volunteering in the schools, participating in community events such as Relay for Life, River Falls Days, and Kinney River Cleanup. Now therefore, Dan Tolan, Mayor of the City of River Falls, does hereby proclaim April 26, 2019 as River Falls Rotary Day in honor of the Rotary's 20th anniversary, its service to the community, and its goals to create opportunities for youth and a better world for all. Given under his hand and seal, the City of River Falls, this 23rd day of April, 2019. Thank you. Okay, next, we're going to recess in the closed session per Wisconsin State Statute 19.85, 1E for the following purposes, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specif speci specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Mr. Mayor, I move we recess in a closed session. Second. Second. Christy, can we have a roll call, please? 
Watson? Yes. Page? Yes. Beerstead? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Gagne? Yes. Downing? Yes. Odine? Yes. We are closed session then. <laughs>